All right, everybody, I'm going to finish up with problem four. Keep the definition system simple. Linear momentum is mass times velocity. That's it. And impulse, you should get both these definitions down. It is the force times the time and is the change in the momentum of the system. That's all they want. Both are vector quantities with both with the size and direction. And then here. By reference to Newton's laws of motion, deduce that when two particles collide, momentum is conserved. So I would say it like this. Um, let's send in one particle like this. We actually did this in class. This is one, and this is two. Now they hit, and so we have them sent out in opposite directions. So I'll write it like this. I have m1, m2, m1, and m2. So um, m1 comes in at v1, sorry, at u1, m2 comes in at u2, and they leave at v1 and v2 respectively. Now, by Newton's third law, okay, the force on 1 due to 2 is equal and opposite to the force on 2 due to 1. So then what this means is that um, if this is the same, then by impulse momentum theorem, or actually just the impulse on both have to be the same. The forces are the same. And by impulse momentum theorem, which is basically an application of Newton's second law, we can write m1 v1 minus m1 u1 equals negative m2 v2 minus m2 u2. We're going to foil this out, so we'll get m1 v1 minus m1 u1 equals negative m2 v2 plus m2 u2. Um, getting initial terms and final terms on each side, this leads us to m1 v1 plus, sorry, yeah, plus m2 v2 equals m1 u1 plus m2 u2, or we can rewrite it the way they like it, um, which is m1 v m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2. So that's the kind of thing they want to see. All right, here, very close. We want the change in momentum. So people forgot this speed going in is positive and the speed coming out is negative. So 50 grams is 0 0.05 kilograms. So the change in momentum is going to be 0 0.05 times negative 18 minus 20. So this is 0 0.05 times minus 38. And that's going to give us a change in momentum of 1.9 Newton seconds. All right, now we want the average force. Um, so we know that F delta T equals delta P, that's impulse momentum. So I can just say delta P over delta T. Um, I'll put a negative sign here. So that's gonna be 1.9 divided by 0 0.08 from here. And that's gonna give me a force of 20.5 so why would a steel ball the same mass and the same initial horizontal speed exert a greater force on the wall? Here's what I'll say. Um, F delta T equals delta P. So the idea with a steel ball hitting and bouncing back works like this. The steel snaps back faster, so its 
time on the wall is shorter. That means the force is bigger. So it's like this. F delta T equals delta P. Right? Change in momentum. So what I'm saying is make F, make delta T smaller, and that's going to lead to F being bigger to make sure that the change in momentum stays the same. And again, this is another way of writing Newton's second law. So that is it for the exam that we took, and I will be using these notes up on Haiku today.